Welcome everyone, Angel Doom here back with another upcoming patch note video for Age of Empires 2. Buckle up for a quick summary of all the upcoming changes. To start things off, we have two important changes in the archer range. The cavalry archers are nerfed slightly by increasing the attack animation from 1.15 seconds to 1.17 seconds. Cavalry archers attack animation is still better than it was at launch and they are pretty used regularly nowadays so I don't think this will make much of a difference. The more important change of the two are for the hand cannons. For the longest time, the hand cannons have been bashed by the community and most of the professionals for being such an underwhelming unit in Imperial Age, even against the very units they're supposed to counter. The developers have reacted to this by increasing the accuracy of the hand cannoneers by 10%, landing them at 75% accuracy. I still think that accuracy is really not the issue here, but it's the fire rate. Even with this change, I really doubt players will pick Hand Cannoneers over our blasts. Hand Cannoneers' reload time is simply too long for their damage output to match or compete with the Arbalests. This change is still a slight buff for civilizations that do not have access to the Arbalest, but for how expensive this unit is, I still think that a buff to the fire rate is also warranted to make this unit a little bit more viable in the Imperial Age. Moving on to civilization specific changes, we take a look at the Slavs. The elite boyars get a 2 melee armor increase to get to a whopping base armor of 8 melee and 3 pierce armor. Please note that this change only applies to the elite boyars as the regular castle age boyars are untouched. Halberdiers will still be able to take them down of course, but I suspect this change was introduced primarily to deal better with other cavalry units like the camels and especially the paladins. The massive boyars are definitely scarier now. Moving on, the Turks get one more buff and this change is something that I've been advocating for a while. The Turks are supposed to be a gunpowder and sieging powerhouse, yet their bombards are often more underwhelming than generic bombards due to the lack of siege engineering in the early Imperial Age. Our artillery's heavy stone cost used to be a deterrent, especially in 1v1s, as the stone could be used to either build bombard towers or for another important strategic castle. However, the developers have changed the stone cost to wood now, so it is much more viable to pick it up now. It is going to be more difficult to deal with all ends from Turk players, given the additional two range will come much earlier in the game right now. Moving on, are war elephants more viable now? We will definitely see more of them in meme games for sure, but there are two buffs and one nerf supplied to these beefy boys. First of all, the food cost is reduced by a healthy 30 food, which adds up a lot in the long run. To offset this, the gold cost is increased by 10. Hence, from a resource perspective, they now require 20 fewer resources to train. Moreover, their training time is also cut by 6 seconds, down to 25 seconds from 31. Overall, it's a nice change to get to see them used very situationally, but I still don't think these changes are just enough for them to be taken seriously in competitive games. And finally, the Burgundian's controversial Fremish Revolution gets a change as well. There is a massive change in cost. You will now have to cough up 400 more food and 200 more gold, up from 800 food to 1200 food and 450 gold to 650 gold respectively. Perhaps more importantly, the Flemish Militia now no longer have their hidden plus 2 bonus damage against buildings, which is extremely important. A group of 80 or so militias rushing against enemy castles were able to bring them down relatively quickly, especially given their high base attack. The meme strategy of destroying castles and town centers so easily should be behind us now, as it is significantly more difficult to afford the technology in the first place, but also the units are less effective against buildings. Overall, I think that these are fantastic changes for the game balance. I still think that the developers should take a look into some underperforming civilizations and buff them with the DLC release, but we will see how these pan out, and of course, I'll be covering them. And finally, keep in mind that everything mentioned in this video were extracted out of the public preview and are not finalized. Given that almost all changes from previous previews were implemented, I suspect that all of these changes will take effect very soon, especially given that none of these changes are outrageous, so I don't think the community will have a negative backlash to any of these changes. 
Well, that's it for now, folks. I'll be covering the Dawn of the Duke civilizations and balance changes as soon as they're out as well. So please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already to not miss out these upcoming videos. As always, thank you everyone for watching and supporting the channel, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank mm -hmm. you.